guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is called Roll for Adventure. It's by Matthew Dunstan and Brett J. Gilbert. It's made by Cosmos. It plays two to four players, takes about a half an hour to play for ages 10 and up. And in the game Roll for Adventure, you're basically going to be choosing a character. You'll be getting a set of die, plus maybe additional die, depending on how many players you're playing. You'll roll those die, you'll set those die into certain areas, trying to defeat monsters, trying to gain these magical crystals, and depending on the level of difficulty, will determine how many crystals you need. Pass it to the next player after monsters come out, and you're basically going to eventually try and gather as many crystals as you possibly can based on the level of difficulty. And if you can do that before you get defeated on any one of the four boards, that are attached to each other, you win. There's a bunch of variable play, more difficulty if you'd like, as well as A and B sided boards throughout the game. Let's go ahead and show you down below how to play Roll for Adventure, brief scenario kind of thing, and then we'll come up and I'll give you my review. So here we have Roll for Adventure, and as you can see, there's quite a bit of stuff in this game, but it's actually very, very simple. And here you go, you got the main board of the game. There's four different parts to it, whether you're going to the ice caves, or the forest, the desert, or the wastelands. They have an A and a B side, and each of the sides do different things. And you can choose, and I would suggest playing on the A side first, but you can then choose to go on the B side, or do, do some kind of mix and match aspect. And I'm just going to flip over one of these just to give you an idea of how it looks see just the same thing but on the different side of the board which is also cool because they provide this these little tabs here which are basically color to color so that the boards look really rather like attached to each other you're also going to take these little skull things place them on the arrows in each of the areas of each of the boards and there's all these extra tokens here that you're going to select and place them down where they tell you to in the rules in the a side is fairly simple though you'll have one of these things here which will be placed here and it'll be moved across the board as you uh, uh, do better at this and gain more crystals. There are these little lasers that you're going to have to remove to gain a crystal. And then there are these neutral die, which you can gain as well when activating this little area here. Uh, additionally, each character or player is going to receive a colored set of die. There's five. When you're playing with two players, every player is going to get an additional one die from the players who aren't playing. And when you're playing with three players, everybody will get one die from the player who isn't playing. This is the Master of Shadows card. He explains how he works. He's going to be put into this deck here in the bottom third somewhere. You're going to shuffle it up, make sure he's in the bottom third, and then place it down over here to form the monster deck. This die here is the Master of Shadows die. He will also be used for these special monsters. Special monsters are additional monsters to increase difficulty that you can put into the deck to make the game even more challenging. Additionally, for as far as challenge goes, there are the different game modes of play. Do you want to play something simple like the Book of Magic requiring five crystals? Or do you want to go for something a little more advanced like the Jewel of Light, which is going to require eight? It's up to you how many crystals you want to play towards, but of course the more you need, the more difficult the game will be. This is your little treasure trove, which is where all the crystals are stored, and of course what you're trying to do is gather them onto this board here, and if you can fill it all up, you'll win. These are the characters here. These characters, you can go ahead and choose random, or at the beginning of the first turn of the game, uh, you can go ahead and select of your choice if you're newer at it, and they'll do something once per turn that you can go ahead and utilize in some way, shape, or form. Usually they're rather good and they will help you throughout the game. And that's pretty much what you're going to get in the game other than, of course, the box and the rule book, which explains everything really rather nicely. So let's go ahead and remove these. We won't be using these. I'll go ahead and just select one at random, the Sword of Saints. Uh, these things here are for the players, just like basically the guidelines on how to play. So if we were playing with the green player and we were playing with the blue player, we'd place these here and here we would also take these away and uh, give every player one die of each other player that isn't playing and then these go set these jewels over here so that you can gather them to get into the sword of saints and you got your master shadows already set this deck up over here i'll place this die over here and then this over here is basically the i don't know what you want to call it the void area in which if you can get 10 pips or more here you'll return anything that is in the middle here die that you have lost from the void back into your pool that you'll be able to use on your turn each player will simply get a character as well we'll have the healer there and then we'll have something like uh, i don't know let's go with the fighter healer and a fighter sounds like a good combination we won't need the rest of these at all that's all we're going to pretty much need Boop. So, this character here says, you may, uh, once per turn, you may defeat one enemy with a total of four instead of six, because normally you're going to only be able to defeat enemies when you have pips worth six on one die. 
Okay, so that's pretty much how everything is set up for two players. This other guy here says you may temporarily forfeit one of your die to reduce one damage in any territory. Place the forfeited die on this board, and you may not use it again this turn. Then roll your remaining die once again. So it protects territories from taking too much damage, because like I said before, if your territory ever gets to the end point, any of these territories, everyone loses the game because this game is a cooperative game. Okay, so to begin your turn, you're gonna simply take all of your die and you're gonna roll them. Once you've rolled all of your die, you're then going to look for same number of pip die. So you have two ones here, two threes, you got a four, five, and a six. And then you'll get to choose to place them in three different ways. One way is you can place them on monsters that are gonna pop up throughout the board. Monsters will only be defeated on a roll of a six. However, if you put something like a five on a monster, somebody else can put a one and that will defeat the monster. Another thing you can do is choose to place any of the same type die onto the board, as long as the board allows you. This one says it requires one of each of the different numbers. So if in this case I were to put uh, ones down, I could put one, one over there, and uh, I could probably put one, one over here as well. And that would be all I could do. I couldn't play any other die. I could also choose to do threes as well, uh, or instead of, so I can put one, three over here, and I can put one, three over here. And the reason why you're trying to do that is each board has something unique and different about it. This one here says, if you can get four die on this board, you'll get one of these bonus die. You'll unlock this bonus die, which will allow you to basically use, utilize these boards easily to gain these crystals here. If you have five on here, you'll get to get a bonus die and you get to remove a monster. And finally, if you have all six, you can remove a monster, get a bonus die, and move one of the territory damage tracks down by one. So if it was here, you can move it back down by one by removing six die from this area here. Over here, it's pretty simple. And I'll go ahead and put my, my ones here. Uh, then if I get, ever get three ones on here, I would remove them, put one of them there, and then I could rinse and repeat up to the point where I had three ones here. Then I'd put that there, permanently remove this die, and I'd get a crystal, and the crystal would go over here. Easy way to get a crystal, but you lose die throughout the game. This area here has little unlocking areas. So if you have four fours here, it will unlock this, three threes here, it'll unlock this, and then two, two, three, uh, four twos here, it'll unlock this. When all three of these are unlocked, you'll get a crystal, and then you're going to put these back. They'll refresh. And the final board is this green one over here, which says it needs fives or sixes. You could put fives and sixes up to the point where it goes to here. When that happens, you'll get a crystal. This will push, and then you'll have to do it for one more plus the number previously done, and so on and so on, until eventually the board gets rather large and more difficult to gain crystals on. And that's pretty much it for the board. Now, the final thing that you can do is, let's say that some of the die from maybe your friends have been removed from the game, and I'll explain that in a second, but they removed, not removed from the game, removed from the board due to monster attacks. You could put up to uh, 10 pips worth of die here and take all of these back that are neutral or yours and give all the rest back to your friends that had lost them. So that's the three different ways. Monsters, board, or this little void area here. After you roll once and place your die, so I'm gonna simply take these ones, these ones here and place them there. I'm then gonna take these die here, roll them once again. Ooh, okay, so I've got a two twos, I got a one, a three, and a six. I'll take this one, place it here. This will go here, these will come back to me. I think they'll just stay on the board, you won't be able to re-roll them. And then you're gonna go ahead and continue to roll the die. And I got another one here, so I'll place that there. You can only remember, you can only roll, uh, you can only place them if it's the same number. So I got two ones here, that's useful. So I'll put these guys here, push this over. These are gonna come back to me like that. And my final roll is gonna be a four. And on a four, I can go ahead and place it either here or I can place it here. I'll go ahead and place it right here. These die are still in my pool, so I'll be able to use them next round, but they are out for now. I have expended all of the die and used them to the best of my ability, so that means we're going to draw a card from this deck here. When you draw a card, you'll place the card next to the territory based on its color, and in this case it's green, and then that monster is going to attack based on whatever it says down below. In this case it says attacks a five and a six on this board. If it removes at least one die, it'll just put it in the middle here. If it removes no die, this territory marker will go up by one damage to the point where it will eventually hit here and people will all lose the game. Uh, additionally with monsters, with something that's also interesting other than just the bottom of the card, if per se, 
let's say we had a guy here and then we had a guy here this is a one and a one and then this three popped up when monsters that are of higher value than the monsters per uh, previously on the board come out not only do they attack but they also bolster the rest of the monsters to attack again so removing monsters is vital to the game otherwise they're going to continually attack as long as monsters that are stronger than, than them come out if a three is out and another three comes out it will just have these two attack plus the new three it won't have anything of the same number variation attack with it just the ones that are lower than it and that is pretty much how monsters work the last thing you need to know is like i said the bottom third of the deck is going to be this master of shadows when he comes out all monsters will attack and you're also going to roll this territory die which will do damage to either all territories or two damage to one territory or if you're very very lucky it'll do nothing to which case he'll get put back into the deck somewhere and he's going to pop out more and more as the game continues so it'll get more and more challenging if you do not defeat the game soon enough and after that if you if you drip flip over a monster and put it out and it attacks the next player is going to get to take their turn simply rolling their die and continuing the game attempting to get crystals and like i said before if this for, this filled up this would move down you'd take a crystal and you'd fill it in and the way you win is to fill these things up completely if you can do that you win the game roll for adventure and if these ever any of these ever hit this spot here you lose the game roll for adventure that's how you play let's come up and i'll tell you what i think about it all right, so let's go ahead and talk about Call to Adventure and uh, the pros and the cons for the game. There is one thing I wanted to mention first, and the void is the middle of the board, which is where all your die go when they are attacked. And then this is called, Grant just mentioned it, was it Grant? Vortex of the Vortex of Resurrection. Resurrection. And then this is called the Storage Chess of Awesomeness. Okay, it might not be, but it should be, and I think that'd be cool. Uh, and... If you ever return die from the vo from the void using the vortex, all of your die and all the neutral die will go to you, and all of the other players' die will go to them. And so that's how you can get more die. And it's always a good idea to do that, just so you get to have all of them, even though you're working cooperatively. I don't know. <laughs> These are all the different characters. There's a ton of them. There's plus two on the, on the board that I already showed you. They all have their own unique abilities. They help you in different ways, and they're fun to pick and choose from as you play the game. Uh, I, I don't like the randomization of choosing them. I like to actually pick my character, so at the cost I'll always increase the difficulty of the game to make it balanced, I suppose. I don't know, whatever. Uh, this game here is a lot of fun. It's a cooperative game and it says it's two to four players, but really you could play a single player variant of this game, no problem. You just play as two, three, or four players on your own, which all that means is you're, you're just going to have to roll two different sets of die. So if you're a solo player and you want to play a game, this one will feel like a solo player game. It's not like a weird variant or anything like that. It will play just fine. However, However, playing with more players is actually a lot of fun and it does change how you view where you want to place things and where other people are going to have their objectives. You're working together on the same board, but there's four different boards and they all function differently. They're going to either give you benefits, they're going to give you your crystals, which you need to win the game, or they'll do something else that's kind of funky, like they'll let you unlock at a cost of losing a die. The monsters! The monsters are pretty simple. They come out and they'll do damage to certain numbers based on uh, this little chart here. One of, some of them will just do damage to ones, and others will do damage to twos, threes, and fours. And others are fives and sixes. If you don't have die on the boards, that's okay, as long as you can take the damage on the board itself. But if you can't, you need to start putting die there just to protect that board. But losing die is also painful. So there's a lot of choices regarding these monsters. And of course, if you wait too long, this little Master of Shadows dude pops out and all hell breaks loose it gets much more challenging as he starts coming out more and more often because more monsters start attacking and of course rolling this die which damages the board double time as well as of course it could uh damage the entire board once and if you get really lucky you can roll what i rolled the first two times we're going to deal with this guy which was a blank i like this game a lot this game is a lot of fun uh, i wasn't sure what to expect with this thing if you like games like king of tokyo or other uh other types of games that involve these Yahtzee mechanic where you're rolling and rolling, you'll like this one. It's different in a few ways, and the first way is you're not going to just be able to roll three times and select which ones you want based on how you rolled. It's more of like you roll all the die, select one type of, of die, whether it be ones, twos, threes, fours, fives, or sixes, and then progressively roll until you've used all your die. So you're almost always going to be able to use all your die, it's just you might not always get to choose uh, the best spots that you would like to put them in to help out the team. Um, any negatives? I mean, I don't have a lot of negatives for this game. I guess here's one. The the chest here, it has this little little thing where it, where it curves in. And then this is supposed to be the top and this is supposed to be the bottom like you're looking down on it. But this doesn't look like it fits on top of this thing. 
And that's, that's pretty much my only negative for this game. Artwork's great, quality's great, it's a fun game, it's quick, it's easy, it's cooperative, it's very friendly, it's very family friendly, it's very easy to understand, very easy to teach, and there's a lot of variability to the game. Roll for adventure. I strongly suggest you take a look at it if you like cooperative die rolling games. I'm going to keep this in my collection for quite some time. This gets my seal of approval. Really, really enjoyed it. I'm going to play it again and again, especially with people who haven't tried Yatsu Mechanic Dies. I think this game is going to sit right next to me, for King, right next to King of Tokyo. One for the competitive variant and one for the cooperative variant. Roll for Adventure, a solid choice for anyone who likes a co-op die roller.